rate no, no, of no, that's, that's not even open for debate. We can measure okay. that now. Fine. Um, let's say that's the case. So how long has, do you believe it's been receding for, what, what's the age of the moon, according to you? Uh, it's it's uh, almost the same time as the formation of the Earth, four and a half billion years, give or take. Four and a half billion years. Okay, so it's been moving away from the Earth for four and a half billion years. Correct. From, from, and what was its initial position? Uh, I mean, about halfway, about, about half the distance it currently is, about 200 million kilometers. And uh, it's like 200,000 kilometers. And it was the yeah. same size? Of course. Uh -huh. And so uh, I forget which law it is. Basically, you know, you, if you move in twice the distance, you quadruple the attraction, the, the gravity. Yeah. I don't remember the, the specific law. And that would have catastrophic effects upon the Earth. Such as? Well, um, do you believe that there's the same amount of water on the Earth's surface as there was? Yeah, but the, the, the actual is. land masses would have been in different places. And so what if the tides are four times as high? I mean, all that means is you've got a, a tidal range that are four times as big. So what? I mean, well, why is that going to be catastrophic to a planet, which has no human life on it? I'm just saying it sounds like it would be a pretty gnarly place to live. Uh, it, when it accreted, it was molten. It would have been an even gnarlier place to live. No, I don't think the Earth was ever a molten mass. Uh, I think there's good reasons to believe it wasn't. Then, then just out of interest, why do you think that the Earth looks the way that it does with an iron core and a mostly, uh, whatever, um, silicate crust? Well, there's no doubt that the center of the Earth is largely molten. Um, Actually, the center of the Earth is solid. But... Um, yeah, there's an iron core that's solid. It's right. several thousand degrees, but then there's a molten region, a plastic region, and then you get up to the crust. Right. So, I mean, that doesn't mean the entire mass was molten. Um, well, what, why? What, so, um, what, do you do actually have an explanation that accounts for why the Earth it looks the way that it does? Because it was made why that way. Why is there heavy stuff in the middle? Because it was made that way. Um, so, uh, when you come across a puddle, do you assume that it was made that way, or that it was actually, it's, it's a formation of gravity and the, the, the landscape? Sir, I think you've committed the fallacy of equivocation. A puddle and a planet are not exactly the same thing. I know they're not the same thing, but what, what we look for, um, in a good theory, it is something that explains almost all of the observable data with the um, most robust predictive models that we have, things like gravity. So here's um, what you want to do. You want to create a, I mean, really what your worldview is, is a metaphysical research program. You want to no, 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 explain no, no, everything no. by way of natural processes, and you don't want to allow for any other possibility in, in the door. Is that right? Oh, well, the thing is that what distinguishes a good model from a bad model? Oh, are you asking me about as a question? Yeah, so for instance, if I say um, this pen was made in a factory, or this pen is a metaphysical um, extrapolation of the invisible pink unicorn, both of those account for the this pen existing, but which one of those is a better model? Right, which one of those do you do apply a naturalistic model or a metaphysical model to account for oh, existence? Okay. Of I think that's a straw man. You're saying that every situation where a metaphysical entity can be appealed to is equally vacuous as your pink unicorn or, or whatever example. In this case, we're talking about the creation of, of the world. Okay, uh, okay. Well, 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 let's, let's, let's use your god. Did your god create this pen? Uh, as in its current form, did he take the, the matter and arrange it into the... Uh, is that a blue pen? Mm, purple, but whatever. Purple, sorry, the red can. Anyways, yeah, did he actually himself arrange the matter into that exact configuration as you now hold it? No, no, he didn't. And I, what, 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 why do you say that? Why don't you apply your metaphysical model to this pen? And why, why do you reject a metaphysical model for the existence of this pen? Okay, I would say that I reject the metaphysical explanation for that pen simply because I, I know, I know that men create pens. Inductive reasoning. Uh, I suppose that is inductive and it's not deductive, which, makes, which means I could be wrong. 
Yeah, yeah, you could. But the reason that you use inductive reasoning is because it's a reliable, generally, it's more reliable than um, other things. It has a okay, track record on, but... of actually being right, of actually being a useful predictive uh, model. Hold on, you also said that there was a possibility of being wrong. Is that also true? There is always a possibility of being wrong. Uh, and I, I agree with that. And the difference is between induction and deductive. When you do a deductive argument, you always guarantee the certainty of the conclusion. With induction, because you're always going from uh, the specific to the general, you never guarantee the certainty of the conclusion. So what we did here is we said that we, we took a general principle which says men create pens. We took a, an individual instance of the pen and said, therefore, men create pens. Or, or sorry, excuse me, therefore, uh, that pen is likely to be made by humans. But I suppose, yeah. since I do believe in God, it is possible for God to create a pen, and that could be the one that you happen to pick up. So, But that's possible. just never a model that you apply in your day-to-day -day life, because it is not a useful model. In this particular case, you're right, because even if God made that pen, it makes absolutely no difference to either of us. Yeah, can you guys hear me okay, first of all? I hear you loud and clear. Great. Um, I just wanted to go back to the comment that you made about you not believing that the Earth was ever molten. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Did the I... Bible says it was made um, cool, as in not hot. So, yeah. So, how do you explain magnetic banding patterns in rocks? If the Earth was never molten, how what caused them? Um, I'm going to have to look up the terms. I, I've not encountered oh. that one before. Well, no, let me go ahead and explain it. Um, basically, it's as uh, the Earth cooled and whatnot, the different spots cooled faster than others, and the polarity in terms of north and south pole of the Earth's magnetic field swapped oftentimes in the um, Earth's history. And what we find is that you can see the crystals of these rocks orienting in very specific directions as time goes on, you know, north, south, north, south, the corresponding perfectly with when the uh, polarity of the Earth shifted. So if the rock was never molten, how would it align in such a way? Um, I'm, I'd have to do my research, but I, I have a book in front of me that responds to certain objections uh, regarding the molten Earth. Um, but I don't want to read from the book, so yeah, I'll tell you what. this isn't this isn't really like a like a. I mean, I've never actually heard anybody say that the Earth was never molten before. So okay. it's one of those things where it's it's not necessarily like a out of the box. I guess just something that came to my mind because if if the Earth was never molten, you wouldn't see these magnetic banding patterns at all. Right. Can I read just a very short, it's actually only three or four sentences, maybe you could sure. respond to it. Sure. All right, this is from a book called In the Beginning by Dr. Walt Brown. Uh, maybe you've heard of him. Anyways, no. uh, his objection, he's got like a hundred or something objections to the old Earth view. One of them, he's, it's entitled Molten Earth with a question mark. So. Uh, I'll just begin reading. It says, For decades, textbooks have taught that the uh, that the early Earth was molten because it formed by meteoritic uh, bombardment. If so, the heat released by the impacts would have melted the entire Earth many times over. He gives a reference. I'm not sure what it's to. Uh, had Earth ever been molten, dense, and non or Had it ever been molten or dense, non-reactive chemical elements such as gold would have sunk to Earth's core. Gold is 70% denser than lead, yet it is found um, on Earth's surface. Therefore, the entire Earth was never molten and did not form by uh, meteor bombardment. bombardment. He gives a few other arguments, too. Um, yeah, just before John comes back, for, for, for the sake of those that are watching, uh, Walt Brown, uh, whether the doctor or not, is um, the originator of the hydroplate theory. Uh, right. Don, back to you. Um, how does that remotely answer my question? It doesn't. Um, it didn't respond to you directly. I'm just saying okay. he's giving an objection to the molten Earth. So if we, if we can show by way of um, another argument that the Earth was not molten, while it wouldn't directly answer your objection, you would have to reconcile how you could deal with that while acknowledging that the Earth was never molten. I should have to let that over the thunder real fast. Let thunder explain why the, the gold is found and, and why everything isn't nicely and completely sorted out. Sure. Um, you know, let, let's just take a look at the Earth by mass, right? The Earth is about, I think it's about 50% by mass iron. And almost all of that iron is found <coughs> in the middle. And the reason it's found in the middle is because the Earth was molten and most of the heavy stuff did sink. But that's not the only mechanism that is functioning here. Uh, yeah, there is uh, chemical retention, there is late bombardment. Um, convection, convection currents, I mean... It's... Yeah, exactly. That's, that's why we still get stuff coming to the surface today. It's because the convection currents of this, um, 
uh, the this uh, the lion's share of the heat from the accretion, and about I think it's about fifty percent from uh, radioactive decay. I mean, the exact reason that he states that most of the heavy stuff has sunk to the core is right. Most of it has sunk to the core. That's why there is an iron core in the Earth and all of the other planets, because the stuff sinks over time. 